Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for coming back to my channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do so. Feel free to share my channel with your friends and hopefully you like this video enough that you'll share it with your friends too. So what I'm talking about in this video are the five, what I consider five amazing filters in Luminar that don't exist in Lightroom. Now, it sounds like I'm slamming Lightroom and truthfully, I like Lightroom. I have it, my library is in Lightroom. And until the point that MacFun or Skyloom comes out with their dam, I don't know if I'll convert to that or not. And so I've been using the Lightroom um, library for several years now. I was an old Aperture user and had to jump ship when they basically said, you know, hey, we're done, good luck. Um, and so I kind of freaked out. And uh, anyway, after a whole lot of pain and a few tedious weeks of moving things, I got in, into Lightroom and uh, I, I really got into Lightroom. Now I'm not a master of Lightroom. Uh, I'm not a super advanced user. I do use it and sometimes I'll just edit my photos. I know I use Luminar all the time and that's what I talk about here. But sometimes I'll just sit in Lightroom with a photo and just edit in Lightroom because I want to get better. I got people that I uh, you know I work with and a lot of people use Lightroom and I, I teach uh, you know how to use Luminar and things. And a lot of people keep their images in Lightroom. It's a great library, frankly. Um, and so I, I'm going to keep up to date on it. So I'm not slamming it, but in drawing comparisons, I think uh, Lightroom's a little bit hamstrung because there's this other thing that Adobe has called Photoshop. And so they, they don't want to go, I think they can't go do everything that's in Photoshop because um, they have Photoshop and they need to sell that app. Anyway, I'm sort of getting off topic, but the point is Lightroom's not a bad product. Um, I like the product, but there's a lot of stuff that is in Luminar that isn't in Lightroom, and in my opinion, it's probably never going to be in Lightroom, partly because they have Photoshop and they need to keep both those products going. So um, I spend all my time in Luminar, most of my time, and uh, there's a lot of great filters. So let's go ahead and get started because I'm rambling at this point. So here we go. Okay, so filter number one, in fact, I'll just show you all five. It's Accent AI, it's Color Balance, it's Adjustable Gradient, it's Golden Hour, and that's Orton Effect. Now, I'm not saying these are the five filters that are in Luminar that aren't in Lightroom, and these are the only five. In fact, there's about 50. In fact, I think there is actually 50 filters in Luminar. It's a massive collection of amazing stuff, and I use a lot of it. I don't use all of it because some of it's a little bit redundant, but um, I use a lot of this stuff, and so I think there's more than five, but these are five that I really key in on, and I think they're great. So let's start with X and AI. AI stands for artificial intelligence. You drag it to the right, and in this uh, photo, it's gonna basically brighten up some of the darker parts. It does use artificial intelligence to sort of figure out what your photo needs. I kind of call it the super filter. It just does a great job. I think I'm gonna probably not go that far because I wanna use some of this other stuff, but it's a brilliant filter. I use it all the time. It's kind of like hitting the easy button. You can just kind of go bang and you got a much better photo with one slider, so I love it. Filter two is color balance. Now. You've probably, if you watch any of my videos, you've seen me use and talk about color balance again and again and again. And I'm gonna keep talking about it because it's freaking badass, to be honest. I absolutely love it. I, I, if you've seen any of my videos or looked at my photos, you probably know that I like shifting colors around. That's a big thing uh, for me because that's part of the beauty of digital photography is you can just kinda take a photo of something and then later in post-production, you can get it to look the way you want it to look because I generally um, create photos based on how it feels to me, either in the moment when I was shooting it or how I want it to feel when I'm editing it later. So I'm not a photojournalist. I'm not saying this is exactly how it looked. Um, and so I use a lot of color shifting and that's where color balance comes in. So it basically allows you to move colors around a whole lot and it splits them between shadows, midtones, and highlights. So again, super fun, super easy. And this is not a tutorial on that filter, but I'm gonna do a little bit here. I'm gonna go a little bit uh, more blue in the shadows and a little bit more blue this side of the shadows. And so just creating a little bit bluer look to the photo. Uh, midtones, I'm gonna do something similar. Well, no, I'm not. I'm gonna go a little bit this way with the midtones, bringing up a little bit of those reds. I'm gonna go a little bit towards the magenta and a little bit towards the blue. So again, not a massive difference, but there's the before. And there's the after, so a pretty, actually kind of a massive difference <laughs> come to come to uh, look at it now. So that's where I was, and that's where I am. A big change, really, and so, and as you can see, I didn't move the sliders a whole lot. I just moved them a little bit. So that's filter two, color balance, and I've got it looking the way I like it now. Next, I'm gonna go to adjustable gradient. 
another filter that I use all the time. It allows you to basically split the photo in half, or you know, you can set orientation. You get this wonderful little gradient here, and you can move it around. I'm not gonna mess with that in this photo because I don't really need to, but I am um, gonna take advantage of the fact that it splits the top and the bottom, so you can adjust exposure, contrast, vibrance, and warmth in either the top or the bottom. And let me show you one more time in a set orientation. These are kind of the gradient zones. So if I'm adjusting the top, the uh, up here is where the 100% of my adjustment is going to take effect. And then some lower percentage, kind of a gradient version of that is going to happen in this section. Down here, a lower gradient version. And then down here, nothing. Um, so that's how it works. Very simple and straightforward. Let me look at my notes. I'm going to take the exposure down in the top. And I'm also going to take the... Uh, uh, the vibrance down a little bit. I don't want to make it too intense. Uh, in the bottom, I'm going to lift the exposure. Let me look at my numbers here. And I'm going to drop the vibrance a little bit because I don't want to overdo the saturation. Uh, believe it or not, as much as I like my saturation. Uh, and I am going to warm it up a little bit. So let me show you what this did to the photo. Here's the before and the after. So Basically, what I did is I realigned the light, right? I darkened the sky a little bit and I brightened the foreground. Here's the before, brighter sky, darker foreground, and here's the after, a bit more balanced, where a little bit darker sky and a little bit lighter foreground. That's primarily what I did. Um, Golden Hour is the next one. This basically gives a nice warm sunlight kind of glow. And um, while it works great on sunshine kind of photos and sunsets and things like that, it also works great on these kind of lights. And so I just want to bump that up. I'm not sure how much. I'm going to go something like that. It gives it a nice kind of pop um, and kind of warms that stuff up. And you can drag the saturation if you'd like to as well. But let me show you the before and the after. It gives a nice glow. It also pops the colors a little bit. And there's so much bluish sort of tint to this photo that having that line in the middle, if you will, which is these office building lights uh, and building lights and the orange on the bridge, that golden hour filter, there's the before, and there's the after, it really makes them pop and stand out, and I like that. It gives a good color contrast to the photo. Now, Orton Effect is filter number five that's, I think, amazing and is not available in Lightroom. And I like to call this the romantic glow filter. That's basically kind of what it does. There's type one and type two. I generally stick with type one. I like that best, uh, but that's kind of what it does. It creates this moody kind of romantic glow, which I think is a lot of fun. Um, let me see here. I'm gonna brighten that just a little bit because I don't want to over darken the photo. And I think that's about it. So let me show you the before and the after. It creates that moody kind of romantic look. Uh, it creates some shadow. Uh, it also softens up some of the details. And so I love it for this type of photo, like kind of blue hour in the city. It gives a nice soft glow, like I said, kind of romantic glow. So there's the before and there's the after. Now let me show you the entire before and after. Here's the before. This is London, by the way. I just got back from London recently and took a, just a shitload of photos. There. It was so great. So many photos. It was awesome. And I love the city. This is beautiful. Um, but anyway, uh, I took tons of photos. This was along the bank of the River Thames, looking over at sort of the financial district area, um, which is across from this bridge here, which I forgot the name of the bridge. I'm sure many of you will know it, but um, it's not Waterloo Bridge. God, what is it? Black? It's not Black. Maybe it's Blackfriars Bridge. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The point is, there's a bridge, uh, and it's London, and you can see it was late afternoon, which in the winter is like 4 in the afternoon. I mean, sunset's at like 4 or 4.15. Uh, when I was there, which is actually really great because uh, it lasts for a long time. It's kind of slow. It gets there quick. You know, like 3.30, you start shooting and getting good light, and you can shoot till 5 or 6 and still have decent light. Then you go eat dinner. It's great. Anyway, I'm di uh, diverging from the topic here. So the point is, that was the before, and that's the after. And now that I look at it, it's probably a little saturated compared to the original. And by a little, I kind of mean a lot. Um, but the point is, you can do a whole lot with a lot of different filters in Luminar. And this was just five of them that don't exist in Lightroom. Can you do some of this stuff in Lightroom? I don't know. I mean, you can hack around. There's not an AI filter, but some combination of other stuff in Lightroom might get you there. Color balance does not exist in Lightroom, but if you use the Curves tool, you can mess around with colors and try to get something similar. Adjustable gradient, you would have to use the gradient uh, filter, the gradient mask, and then make all those adjustments. It's just harder. Golden Hour doesn't really exist, but you could create 
uh, maybe bumping up the oranges and saturation in the HSL panel in Lightroom, and the Orton effect. Not really sure how you'd replicate that in Lightroom. And the truth is, even if you can replicate these, I, it's so much easier in Luminar. I, that's what I like about it. More filters, more power, more stuff you can do, and it's easier and quicker. And as much as I love making videos and editing photos, I don't want to spend a long time jacking around with a single photo. I want to edit, get it done, and get on to the next one because I got a lot I want to do. So that's it. That's five amazing filters in Luminar that don't exist in Lightroom. Hope it's helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe, like, comment, share, all that stuff. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for coming back. I really appreciate it. I'll see you soon with another video. And that's it, my friends. Take care and adios.